Okay, now I'm going to hit you with a, another possible approach for um, doing a, a portrait, and this is with the same reference photo. And this is going to be called Line and Local Color, um, better known as the cartoon kind of thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a gesture layer, much like we've done every time. We're going to do a clean line layer probably right on top on top of that and another layer and then do another layer of kind of brushwork so we'll kind of get to it I think the looser you can stay on the initial layer like the better and again here you're kind of following forms and then what we're gonna do from this point is go to the most basic and minimal approach to showing off the forms that we can. Um, and that's kind of hard to do for a lot of people. Um, and I think one of the things, I think with drawing teachers, the um, cartoon approach kind of gets a bad rap because um, it looks flat, right? And what you're trying to do early on in the beginning stages of drawing is is create something that's not flat. You're trying to create depth. You know, if you're able to create depth, you can draw, right? Um, and if you can draw with depth and in proportion, you can really draw. Um, but that being said, you know, it's just another approach among many. So I don't think we should discriminate too much it's just that you want to be able to do all of these approaches, right? Not just one. Got to be sure to get some hair in there too. Got some clumps going. So I don't like to put time limits on drawing. I don't know if we've talked about that, but you know, a lot of people like to do 30 second gestures and stuff like that. I always hated doing that in school because I wanted the opportunity to do a quick gesture and then redo it and try to do it better. Um, I always like kind of keeping the model in place and, and retrying and reobserving and, and trying again. Um, it's, you know, leaving the room to do that I think is really valuable. Um, so if you have a situation where you, where you can kind of um, keep control of the, of the modeling time and, and uh, if you can keep reobserving and, and changing, um, I think that's kind of the best possible situation. So what I'll do is, again, I'll separate these out, move them apart so we have more of a reference rather than a tracing image. And the only reason I do this tracing image is just to speed up the gesture process so that I don't have to refine and measure as much. If you're doing this analog, you can refine and measure. That's fine. Um, and you'll get, you'll eventually get to the same, you know, result. There's no reason that, that you can't get a super accurate portrait. And in the beginning, you know, when you're just learning to draw, which um, I'm assuming that you are, you know, your goal is to get some the, your portrait to look human. You know, the likeness is a bonus. Um, so what I want to do here is kind of go a little more carefully, but elegantly nonetheless, and start to refine these lines that create this portrait. Almost like an Art Nouveau sensibility, I want to search for long, elegant, flowing lines. I want lines to kind of flow into each other and interact with each other in interesting ways. And I can go from here and, and change and, and make lines evolve and refine them. But at some point I have to kind of get these lines down first. What I look for is little places where I can overlap something. Anytime you create an overlap, you have a good chance of creating depth. So if I can create some overlaps, 
and some overlapping lines, I'm going to feel better about my ability to create depth. So if I click off the gesture layer, it's going to start it to get some refinement here. And the way that you refine is going to kind of become part of your part of your signature, right? What lines you choose to keep and what lines you choose to eliminate are kind of up to you and there's no hard and fast rule for this but you are going to need to develop a way of doing it that makes sense to you but what you're trying to focus on and why I would suggest not doing this approach to begin with and when you're learning is you need to focus on like form and overlap and depth and choosing lines that emphasize form while still being minimal um, and that's a difficult thing to do so kind of realize that some of the stuff is elegant and some of it's not. I can erase if I need to, soften things or erase completely. Um, I can also do things like um, that I can't do with analog media is give myself um, a slightly less opaque under layer so I can kind of further distinguish what I'm working with here. Probably just drew too many lines more than necessary for the uh, flashes because I'm probably going to come back and do those most of this value. Um, let's see here. So here's a good example of, of overlapping forms, right? So we know that the form around the mouth is in front of the lips. And the chin kind of comes in front of that so we can overlap the chin, right? Looking for an elegant way to do that. See, it got a little heavy there. So I'm going to have to erase and kind of find that line again. That's better. And then when I go back in space, the line that kind of goes um, on the contour here, that's going to go behind that. And then the cheekbone is going to go behind that. And then the bone ridge around the eye is going to go behind that too. And then the forehead is going to come behind that line. So what I've done is I've kind of, using line only, I've indicated where forms overlap. And I think that's really important. Um, that's something that most people, when they're beginning the kind of cartoon style work of line and local color, that they miss out on because they don't know how to how to draw with with based on forms. They don't know where the forms are. So, if that applies to you, go back and do a little more research with forms. And I can very lightly kind of indicate where um, some cast shadows are. Because um, I may need to come back and and get those going in the uh, upper layers. I want to get a nice um, elegant line for the chin if I can, really soft and smooth. So if I turn this gesture layer off, I'm kind of coming down to the essentials 
of this portrait. I'm probably going to leave the gesture layer on the entire time because I like to see that search um, in my own drawing. Um, so what I'm going to need to do is go through with the hair and kind of find a few essential bits of hair that I want to keep. Some clumps, basically. And those clumps are going to kind of define most of the hair. And I don't want to, I want to eliminate most of them. I just want to keep a few that kind of help me describe the forms of the head. Kind of this whirl of hair back here. Nice. I want to get this strand that's right in the center. So here I've got a line emphasis, the contour line emphasis of the of the portrait. And what I'm going to do is add a, another layer. And if I were doing this analog style, I would probably do this um, with wet media and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that layer under those line layers so that the line gets preserved. I'm going to pick like um, a light middle value. Um, don't want it to be metallic. Um, and I'm going to come in and start to just delineate where the differences in these forms go. And up the tool size past 100 so it goes a little faster. Double it basically. And I can kind of, without really distinguishing anything, just separate light and dark, sort of like I did in the other, um, in the tonal approach. And this is going to wind up being pretty flat. which for this approach is what I want. I want to focus on flatness. I want to focus on the elegance of line. And that's kind of something, I think in Italian they called it the uh, disegno and e colore, so design and color, line and color. Um, and it's not something that you really wind up focusing on a lot in traditional foundation studies um, and in the academy, but I think it's kind of it's kind of nice to be able to to mix some approaches, especially if you already know how to how to draw with a, with a forms based approach and you can already do hatching. This is kind of fun because it's you know you're taking a new approach to things and you're separating it out, you're kind of, you know, focusing on particular subsets of your skills and you're increasing the versatility of what you can draw and you're also coming back to this at a more advanced stage whereas um, other folks that have only done this, you know, might not create as elegant of a piece. And here, you know, you don't need to, like, differentiate between what's light and what's dark um, within this value. You don't need to make, you know, distinctions in, the, in like, oh, this is, this is a much darker bit than this. So what you can do is just wherever you see something darker, uh, wherever you see something in shadow, just put like one tone down. It's pretty simple. Um, and again, because we're trying to like boil this down, we're trying to simplify it, we're trying to do the least amount of work for the most effect possible. And it does take some care to do this, you know. You don't want to put value down where you don't need it. Um,
but I think you can be, you could be potentially too careful with it also. Um, you still want to maintain a, like a looseness and a, and a liveliness to the portrait. And uh, you can kind of come back and emphasize some of the overlap that you did. Some of the form work. And you know, here, when I go back and maybe uh, zoom out a little bit, you'll kind of see what this does to the portrait. And this has a totally different effect than um, almost any other kind of portrait style. Um, and, you know, this is kind of something that I think that you can go, you know, steal some ideas from cartoons um, for which lines to use and which lines not to use. I got a lot personally out of um, out of watching Cowboy Bebop and how they approach things like the the nose and the near side of the nose in the three quarter portrait. Um, if you really want to, what you can do is, uh, you know, then add another value, right? Maybe not even your darkest value, but just one that's dark-ish and then go through and differentiate another step of value on top of that, right? Like you can go in and without getting to the value that's as dark as your as your pen, you can, um, I think I'll reduce it down to 100 uh, for the tool size, the normal tool size. You can knock down some values This is kind of like the Shepherd Fairy poster effect. You know, the Obey guy did the Obama Hope poster and so on. Um, and just by differentiating three values, you're going to create a much more dramatic approach to form. And the more of these that you kind of create and emphasize the um, more realistic it's going to look in the long run. Essentially is what we're doing with the tonal approach. Um, basically is we're kind of doing a version of this. You can kind of borrow stuff from here and there within your reference image. And you'll wind up kind of creating something with a soft and minimal touch. So again, if we zoom out, it kind of breaks the myoptic view, and that'll allow you to. Um, see if you need to differentiate any more areas. Um, at this point, I don't really think that I need to, um, but I can show you what happened, you know, if I step it down, you know, one more level and add some dark darks in there, right? Because there's really only a couple of places in the image that get super dark. Of course, that's going to be the pupil, right? And some of the eyelashes, and I'm probably going to need to reduce the size of this brush even further, right? Because these are pretty small areas that I'm working with. Cool. And then with maybe six or seven areas of deeper value, 
Um, that's kind of changed the portrait entirely. Um, made it something more of a finished product and with a couple more tweaks, you know, it'll be kind of more or less done. Kind of got boxy here, it's a little strange. Um, from here you can use an eraser or blending tools or whatever to kind of soften things up or change things or whatever you need to do to kind of go back and forth and you know tweak anything that you that you don't really like. I think that's a little bit better. No, it's still got a little bit heavy, but I think that's okay. I think I can just erase uh, very softly some of the stuff over here. I think some of it might be um, might be able to tweak in some of the lower layers if I go back and. Uh, I drop that value. Um, be able to come back into the eye itself and very get some subtlety there. I think what was happening is the sharp edge combined with the high contrast kind of messed things up a little bit. I can do that on both eyes just to kind of soften it. It's not going to change the effect too much. Um, or change the eye anatomy, but it's going to change the overall effect for the better, I think. Um, yeah. So there it is. The uh, the third approach, this is the line and local color approach, or the cartoon approach. Um, and I think it's one worth examining, especially after you've had the training of being able to draw out forms and find the contour forms rather than the act, than the contour of the overall shape of, of a figure or object. And again, let's see what um, turning on the texture layer does. I love this kind of texture overlay effect because it um, gives um, something unique to the portrait. It makes it a little more real. And what's nice about it is it's just like a nice subtle fin finishing touch that you can put on some on top of something digital to give it a nuance that digital work doesn't usually have. Um, kind of brings it in like you know hybridizes it with the real world a little, and um, and I really enjoy that. 